Roman, do you know what I love the most? Donuts and vodka. No, well, uh, well, okay, partially, but I love trucks, and right now, uh, this is a very special episode of TFL Talking Trucks, because we're at the Chicago Auto Show. Yep, we're going to do a walk around from the Chicago Auto Show, guys, so this is going to be a long video. It's going to be kind of casual, because we just got here ourselves, uh, so we don't know exactly what's here. So you're going to discover what's here with us, but we thought we would start here at the Super Duty, because we're also going to be talking about kind of the state of the truck world, aren't we, Andre? Yeah, and for 2023, and we, of course, want to kick it off with this brand new truck because you know when they initially announced the 2023 Super Duty they said it's all new and I was very skeptical right because it looked like they put a new grill on the truck and called it a day but there's a lot more to it yeah especially those wheels check those things out that's those are crazy look at that those are like moon wheels or something yeah this is really cool I mean I would I would rather see it in like silver because I like a little bit more color but this is a Lariat we're standing next to an F-250 Lariat and of course, so they introduced new engine options. Uh, there's now going to be a high output diesel in this puppy, regular diesel, 6.7 power stroke. Uh, and this is a diesel because I know that because of, I can see the dual exhausts. So uh, in, this. The, in this podcast slash video, we are not only going to talk about the Super Duty Andre, we're going to head on over to Ram, we're going to head on over to Ford, we're going to head well, Chevy. Chevy, <laughs> we are at Ford. Uh, GMC. GMC. Well, everything. T Toyota is here, too, and Nissan. Yeah, so we're going to go to as many of the booths as possible and kind of discuss what the new trucks are. And really, um, I would say that uh, these trucks actually are already hitting dealerships, aren't they, Andre? Yeah, uh, that's, that's the rumor. And um, so this is kind of weird, right? So here's what Ford is doing. So uh, I've already seen a couple of these are starting to uh, arrive and being built, but they're starting with work trucks first. And this is kind of odd because usually they start with really high platinum editions and limited editions and really, really expensive trucks. But Ford uh, is kicking it off with work truck. Because I don't know why. It could be uh, supply and demand. Um, it could be, well, do you want to look at this work truck? Yeah, let's go look at it. Sure. So what's uh, new on the new Super Duty, Andre? Well, look, everything is new. They've added uh, a sidestep in the rear bumper so you could you could climb up and down. You know who else does this? Well, the first time we saw that was Chevy, of course. Yes. Uh, but uh, now everybody's kind of adopting it. And look, they have a uh, sidestep on the side of the bed as well. So you could reach in the middle of the bed. Um, and so they in increase their towing numbers, their payload numbers, uh, mostly across the board. And they're pushing the limits, dude, on, on maximum towing. So what are we talking about? What kind of numbers? Uh, well, this dually is not here. Yeah. I'm looking around. But 40,000 pounds. Oof. 40,000 pounds, it's a half a semi-truck. You need a CDL for that. Definitely need a CDL for that. Like you have. And you know what's interesting, and we had some questions from our Patreon viewers yeah. about this, is that that 40,000 pounds, of course it's a diesel two-wheel drive, two-door truck, but you have to remove a spare tire and do some other things to uh, actually be able to tow that weight. Wow, so how about the inside? Anything new on the inside? Yeah. Let's, let's pop it open and show them. I see a big old screen, Andre. Surprise, oh. surprise. Oh, yes. And it has a little Ford noise. Yeah. There. There you go. So it, this looks similar to the F-150, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not identical. If you look in the center of it, kind of the way the dash flows together, um, it's unique to the Super Duty. But if you look at like the vents, the side vents and the steering wheel, it's very familiar. It looks like the new F-150. You, you like the little American flag that they hid in the... Uh yeah. Easter egg on the side there. Everything's, you know, America now, of course. And we're looking at the Lariat here. Lariat is kind of their mid-grade. Yeah. But look at this. Um, they have really premium seats, uh, reclining seats. I'm not sure if this is like all the way down. I don't know if it will go all the way down into a kind of a laying position. But they've been kind of making the Lariat more premium over the years and more expensive. Dude, the pricing is going, oh, look, it does lay down. And it Look, extends. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, and, and the, this cushion came up, and it really lays down like a bed. Now, here's a fun fact that I'm sure a lot of you know, but some may not know: uh, the cab on a Super Duty or a heavy duty truck is no bigger than the cab on a half ton. It's identical. Actually. Yeah, they're identical, and you can, yeah. you can potentially swap them out. Uh, but you'd think, since it's a bigger, more capable truck, you'd have a bigger cab. But the cab size is the same. And they're using aluminum, of course, right? Yeah. So that's uh, one of the enablers for the great payloads and towing. This one. This one is 3,250 pounds on this crew cab F-250, which is a great number actually, dude. Yeah, it's, uh, 
pretty remarkable just how much these things can now haul and tow and how much horsepower they're putting out. It's like uh, every generation, it's, you know what it's like? It's almost like storage in a computer. It just keeps like exponentially increasing. At some point, it's going to be, like you said, a half a semi-truck. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy it's, when you think about it. Yeah, and they're doing it in these crazy ways because they're not you know, creating a new class of truck, right? It's the same class. It's the F-350, F-450. Uh, but somehow they eke out a few more pounds here and there. Hey, by the way, guys, if you're looking uh, to check out some really great deals on some cool vehicles, head on over to TFL Bids. Uh, we've got finally people submitting cars and trucks to and us. And trucks and, and SUVs. Right, and right now Tommy's selling his uh, unique GP. There's only 500 of those, mini GP. There's also a Corvette on there, and there's also a pretty cool muscle car. So check out TFLBids.com if you want to check out some good fun enthusiast cars all right so what about this guy well um, it's a long bed look at this so uh, i'm six three ish and this is an eight foot bed and it's showing kind of if you were watching us of course on tfl talk it's got a big giant like salt and sand spreader right for the, for the winter time Whew. can you should we do this at tfl do, should do, we buy a plow? a plow truck yeah no, we shouldn't have a plow truck. <laughs> this is not cheap, I imagine. Unless you want to start TFL plows. <laughs> <laughs> a separate channel? Yes, exactly. A separate uh, channel? But I would, you know, if talk to the guys at Boss, I would love to actually try doing some uh, plowing videos. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, we haven't heard back from them. So once again, open invitation to you guys at Boss. If you want to hook us up uh, with either the truck or with the plow, we'll definitely have some fun. Even though now it's getting kind of late in the winter, right? Maybe next year. Yeah, and also uh, what, what the truck industry is, everything is getting more advanced, right? The computer systems, the Super Duty now is also uh, you know, over the air updatable. Um, so they're increasing the uh, power numbers, like we talked about the high output diesel, right? Uh, but the, these trucks are becoming di more difficult to tune, right, dude? Yeah. Uh, because they're, they're so complex and they're very advanced and they already come with a lot of power. So speaking of a truck you probably can't tune, it's right here. It's the new uh, Lightning Pro. Now, uh, this truck, I would think, has a unique distinction in that it became uh, the most, uh, what, uh, what would you say, the highest amount of additional markup uh, from the manufacturer. So it started out reasonably, right? What did this thing start at? Like 50 ish thousand dollars? Or was no, it, it was 40, 41,000. $41,000. With a smaller battery. With a small, and now, if you want the base pro, how much? 56? 56. 56. I'm, so it actually increased in price by Six, almost $16,000. Yeah. That's not an ADM. That's not an additional dealer markup. This That's, is a man manufacturer. This is a manufacturer. Yeah, MSRP. I would almost say it was like, you know, milk when you go to like 7 Eleven, right? It's or, cheap. Or eggs. Or egg. Well, no, not eggs. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> but like a lost leader, but now it's $56,000. Well, remember when they first announced this, right? And we saw a couple of these at the dealer for like 42 grand. We thought because it has, what, a 93 or 95 kilowatt hour battery, that you can't even buy a battery for that money, right? 93 kilowatt hours is already quite pricey and there was a whole truck that came along with it. So, so it was incredible. So can I coin a term here? What? I'm gonna say that the Lightning is, as we know, we've owned one, right? We drove it all the way up to the highest point you can drive in the US, which is Prudhoe Bay. So we put 13,000 miles on our Lightning. So we've had a lot of seat time, but I would say it is under batteried. Uh, yes. Not enough battery. So 80 kilowatt hours, right? And then the, uh, this is like 93-ish. 93, and then the one we had was... One, 134. Yeah, 134. Kilo, and uh, the problem with that is if you put a 100 kilowatt hour battery in a sedan or a crossover, right, it's not that big. You don't have this giant, well, box in the wind. But and in, a big nose. And in, but in an electric truck, especially in the winter, especially if you put, you know, not these tires, but all terrains on it, you do start to really see a, a significant decrease uh, in the real world. And there are a lot of videos yeah. out there about people talking about it. But yeah, I think a truck, at least with the current state of technology, needs at least 150 kilowatt hour battery. And I think Ford is probably going to do that because this was their first crack at it. And mm -hmm. now they're working on a new Lightning, which will be a new chassis and a new ground up design. And I think uh, Ram has their electric concept here. So uh, we're going to ch check it out. And we were at CES, Roman. And they were talking about, you know, high density batteries, you know, uh, putting, putting more technology into their trucks. So it's, it's becoming really competitive. By the way, I got to say, I got to give a big kudos to Ford uh, for their Tremor line. You know, I think that was a really brilliant move, right? For a long time, they were basically 
give or take two or three levels of off-road truck. You had the FX4, and then of course there was the Raptor, but there was nothing really in between. And now Ford has stuck the Trammer in there, so uh, it, it really, I think, is a sweet spot for a lot of people. And became successful, right? Yeah. Because you have payload and some off-road capability and a few parts from the Raptor in this truck, right? Like the transfer case. Okay, question for you guys, all right? Yeah. Black or anti-matte or blue? <laughs> what this color is? Yeah. Or <laughs> yes. Black or antimatter blue? It could be antimatter. You want to? You wanna, should I? Should I should Go underneath. You want me to? Well, it's okay. We're, this is the media day. <laughs> All right. Do you want me to go? Uh, no, I'll go. If I get yelled at, you you. you. <laughs> if I get yelled at. All right. Oh no. Agate black. Oh. oh it's not antimatter blue. You know that was you very, know antimatter graceful. Antimatter blue. It looks different in different light conditions. <laughs> so I thought this was antimatter blue, but it's not. It's not. All right, let's, uh, let's head over to Ram. We can take a yeah. look around at what else is here. So uh, this is Nissan. Yeah, this is Nissan. But the they don't have any, a lot of trucky stuff going on here. No, this is the new Aria, uh, of course, the new electric car. We're going to go drive that in about a month. I can't wait. Oh, wait a minute. There is a cool truck over there. Should we check it out yeah, first? Let's walk over there, yeah. Okay. So the question, of course, that people might be thinking about with Nissan is, will the not the Frontier, we know that's solid and selling well, but will the Titan survive? Uh, they've discontinued it in Canada, and the rumor right. was that it's going to get discontinued in the U.S., but so but far... But 23, it's still here. It's still here, yeah. Yes. So let's take a walk over and check out the... I believe that's a done-up Frontier. You can tell that kind of bronze color wheel is really hot right now, because yeah. at the auto show, they're all wearing that color. A lot of, a lot of trucks are doing this. Yeah. Um, and I love that Nissan is bringing Nismo parts, right? Uh, Nismo was, in my mind at least, traditionally associated with sports cars, right? But they also have Nismo off-road. So I think they're showing off some of the parts. Uh, check it out. This is labeled, uh, branded as Nismo, and I'm, I'm happy that you can go actually to the manufacturer and get parts that are were tested, that are warranted. Um, of course, they're a little bit expensive, right? Because the manufacturer well, has approved it, right? Well, well, let's face it, Andre. I think what? what happened was the manufacturers realized they were letting a lot of aftermarket companies basically take some of the money off the table that right. they could be keeping for themselves because all this stuff, right, would be better off to be packaged into the loan if you're taking out a loan versus having to go to your local outfitter and have it done. Yeah, and you can buy it like this from a dealer, right? Yeah. So. So there's, of course, the rack. Once again, Nismo branded. I think um, they did a really good job with the Frontier. I, I mean, I think they just hit the right styling. They hit the right engine. Uh, you know, they hit the right kind of size. Uh, and I think it's just selling like hotcakes. Look, there's a um, corner step right yeah. here for getting on, on top of it because it has a small lift. Hey, Dan, we're on camera, uh, just to let you know. So we're rolling. Yeah, I was just, let me, let me introduce you guys to Dan. Hi. Dan is Hi, everybody. Uh, with Nissan. Hey, dude. How are you? Good to see Good you, man. See you. Thanks for coming out. I was saying, you guys just hit the right chord with, with that new Frontier. How's it selling? Uh, it's selling every one we can make. I bet. So yeah. we're very excited about it. And then, as you can see with this one, we're offering a now a line of Nismo off-road parts. We, we were talking about that. Yeah. You, you can bundle it into your loan when you buy the Absolutely. truck. Absolutely. Dealers is... Dealer installed, warrantied. And so basically, it's just you can enhance the truck in your own way and still have that peace of mind because the warranty is still intact. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great thing, and it uh, makes it uh, badass. Yeah. yeah <laughs> well, look, look, look like at it. this truck. I mean, yeah, uh, beefy tires, beefy a, tires a, a small lift. Nismo wheels, yeah. small lift, the racks, the top, the roof rack, uh, lighting, all of that you can get through your dealer now. So yeah. It's That's very really exciting, cool. and, and really, as a truck owner, you can make it yours. Do whatever you like. We have rock sliders on there as well. Uh, and there's a lot more coming too, so that's really exciting for the frontier owner. Okay, give us something under embargo. Oh uh, yes, uh, yes. Give, no. us, give, yes. Us, give, give us some. Yeah, give us some scoop here. Uh, Superchargers? No, that would be fun though. <laughs> we do have a Nismo exhaust. All right, that's okay. cool. Okay. I would say that you know, just just stay tuned because there's a lot coming for Frontier. That is, this is one of the most exciting products we have because of the amount of personalization that you can have as an owner. You heard it here first. Yeah. There's a lot coming. It's yes. built, built in Mississippi, Andre. Yes. yes. So people don't know that. They think, you know, Tacoma's built in Texas, but... Yeah. Well, well Tacoma Mexico, moved to Mexico, Mexico actually. Right? Yeah. 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 Hitting Mississippi. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There it is. All right. All thanks, right. thanks, thanks, man. Appreciate thanks. It. Okay. thanks, man. All right, let's keep going, Andre. Okay. Uh, so uh, what, what do you think of me? It's snowing. Look, it's snowing. Oh, it's snowing. It's snowing on the area. Inside inside the show. Uh, what, do you think it, what do you think it means that they're... Uh, 
is no um, Titan here. Uh, I'm just looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. I don't see a Titan. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe that says something. I don't know. Maybe we're reading well, but, too much but into for it. 2023, it's still on sale. Yeah. So yeah. at least it's not at the show. All right. Well, let's head over to well, uh, Stellantis. Yeah. Right. Well, let's, Ram and Ram and well, how can we how can we bypass the Gee, Grand yeah. Wagoneer or or the uh, the so Rubicon Gladiator? I, I was just visiting my mom in Florida. Yeah. That's a really cool color, by the way. Oh my, that's gorgeous. Yeah. And I was amazed at how many Jeep. Uh, gladiators they sold it's incredible you see them everywhere now you know it seems like they went from you know being nowhere to overnight everybody's got a gladiator and they're specialty like you know just kind of lifestyle vehicles right uh, it says the new starting price is about 38,000 um, on the gladiator which used to be of course a lot lower uh, but this is um, this is a Rubicon dude so so you are you can get it affordably you could also get it very very optioned of course, with lockers and all kinds of stuff, beefy tires, and the diesel engine is still here, although it's going away soon. Yeah, you know, I think uh, diesels in uh, small trucks are pretty much. It's uh, you know we had a question on Patreon about this, right? Yeah. Uh, why midsize trucks in the United States don't have diesels? And I really think it's partially cost, right? Because a diesel Gladiator is like sixty thousand dollars, and for sixty grand, you might as well buy a full size truck, right? Instead of a instead of a small one. Yeah, and I think also um, not only that, but weight, right? So, I mean, the payload, downside, the payload, all those things. You lose a lot of payload because yeah. of it. And, and let's face it, with electrification, and I hate that term, but it's true, right? What you're doing is you're replacing diesel with electricity, and you're kind of increasing torque and capacity by going electric versus diesel. And but I know that breaks the heart of a lot of all you diesel guys, but it and gals, but it's true. But, but there's no electrified, at least yet, mid-sized truck. Yeah, when's that one coming? They're all going four-cylinder turbo, huh? Yeah, they're all going turbos. Uh, the electrified trucks are bigger right now. The, the Lightning, the Silverado, and we'll see Ram in a let's second. Let's go. Speaking yeah. of electrified, let's, let's head on over there. Yeah. yeah. Let's go check it out. Yeah, let's go check out what, what Ram has wrought. You like that, Andre? What Ram has wrought? <laughs> I love almost, that. Yeah, so no, no chat bot could write that kind of stuff, I'm telling you. <laughs> 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 or maybe you can, I don't know. So, or I can't even pronounce what you just said. So I see a bright yellow TRX. Tell me oh. about that. Let's take a look at that because that's their latest and greatest uh, new model <laughs> version oh. of the TRX, right? This is sweet, dude. Uh, it's, you, like, uh, you like it, huh? It's the Havoc. Yeah, what a cool name. It's the I, Havoc. You guys say uh, Stellantis does a great job. Yeah, like Last Call Dodges, uh, yeah. uh, Havoc the, TRXs. Havoc. Look at this color. I hope it shows up on camera really well because this is just... It's like you could see it from space, right? It's just boom, in your face. Yeah, this is not one that the police are going to ignore. <laughs> so one thing that we have a common question. They're saying, when is the Demon TRX coming, yes. right? That's what everybody's asking because now the Raptor R is here, you know, the supercharged oh, F-150. 700 horsepower is not enough? Yeah, and, and this has 702, and everybody's like, well, when is the last call TRX coming? And we don't know yet, right? They haven't announced any plans to increase the power on this guy. Hey, since we couldn't break any news on Nissan, let's break some news ourselves. So uh, this weekend, we've got a really cool video coming up where we actually race the four most powerful trucks in the land in its straight up drag race. What did you do, Tom, Andre? This is exciting. This is, we call it the Super Truck Bowl. Yep. And we had a regular Raptor. Yep. We had the Raptor R. Yep. We have a TRX. Yep. And we have the Hummer EV truck all going up against each other in the drag race. I think that's the first time those four trucks have ever been together in a drag race. So we'll see how the new, obviously, Raptor R competes against the TRX, and then how do they do against the Hummer EV. At the yeah, end and after you watch that video, which is coming in just a couple days, yep. maybe the TRX guys will rethink, and maybe they will demonize this and raise the power. All right, let's keep going. Let's find the, uh, where's is the electric There's another here? Havoc. Yeah. There's, there's a bunch of Havoc here. Do you know how much cost? Do you remember how much this cost? Do you remember the price? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, expensive. It's, it's, it's six figures, I think. I think it is, yeah. I, I think, think it's, it's a, about on a hundred grand. It's, I think it's over. I think it was close to... Like 103? Yeah, exactly. It was just under. It was like 103. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so, yeah. So, before we move to heavy-duty RAM, right. uh, let's, let's pause for a little, a little, uh, a little pause. Yeah, let's, let's, let's hear from the people that are helping to make this podcast possible. All right, Heavy Duty Ram, next. All right, so we've had uh, this one of these trucks yep. in Colorado already. This is a 2023 Ram Heavy Duty Rebel. Is it different than the 2022? 
well, the Rebel did not exist in the heavy duty lineup yep. until this year. So they're doing something new. <laughs> I stumped you there, Andre. <laughs> you were going for the Rebel model. I was going for the whole truck. With the, well, with I'm the, talking about the Rebel. I know, I know, I know. It was funny though. You were like, well, you were, the look on your face is like, what the hell is Roman talking about? <laughs> yeah, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, all right, tell us about the Rebel. Look at the HUD. You know, uh, Alex, our, our very own Alex used to have a light duty Rebel. And now this is a heavy duty rebel uh, with uh, a heavy duty hood. But, but look, Andre, it's, I don't think it's real. I think it doesn't do anything. Oh man. I think that's just. Why do you have to bust my bubble? Sorry, always? I didn't mean to bust it. I think that's just cosmetic and not functional. But it I looks know. cool. I know, but look at the bulge. It's got a big bulge. <laughs> oh God. No, that's another word you don't want to use. <laughs> <laughs> but new mirrors, Roman. Nice. This is where you were going. Yeah. Uh, for 23, all heavy duty rams are getting a new mirror. Um, and it's a new design and it's power extendable, it's power folding, it's got lights. Uh, some of them have also cameras, not just underneath for 360 degree views, but also in the back. This one doesn't have it, but you could see actually in the back of the truck. Like eight camera, nine cameras? So, so basically, Ram had the power wagon, right? Yes. And then everybody, you guys said, hey, we want a diesel power wagon. And also the one with that tows more. Yeah. And, and then and holds more. And then Ford came along and gave it to you. <laughs> and they did the tremor. <laughs> they did the tremor, which basically was what you guys were asking for. And now to answer that, Ram has come along in a Rebel version of the uh, 2500. But still, uh, you know, I, no power wagon <laughs> with the diesel. So here's my uh, beef with this truck, okay. with the heavy duty Rebel. Yeah, I, I I like that the Ram is going this way. Yeah, but they still I don't think they gave it enough payload. Mm. In a lot of these trucks, has about 2,300 pounds, um, and I think Super Duty can top that. Um, so I think they need to do something else and offer even more capability in their Rebel line. And by the way, uh, nice work on the Trailhound. Our Ram is uh, about to go down to Arizona with Andre and his Buhanka. So uh, in a couple of weeks, they're going to do, and Alex who's behind the camera, they're going to do uh, the uh, El Camino del Diablo, yes. the Devil's Highway with Andre, David, uh, and Alex, and, Alex yeah. and his dog. <laughs> so this should be a fun trip. Well, I'm guys. glad Alex's dog is coming because we need protection <laughs> because <laughs> it's desolate desert. Yes, he'll be eating. So. Andre, don't eat Alex's dog. He loves him a lot. No, protection. <laughs> okay, don't, okay, eat, not, don't eat Frank. <laughs> why, why, why would you even bring that up? <laughs> well, you said it's desolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here is the... Uh, we've done a lot of videos with this. So we Ram Revolution. We won't belabor it. If you haven't seen it, this is... Uh, the concept version of Ram's all-electric truck. And it's got a lot of unique things. And of course, if you're curious as to what those are, you'll see that it's got a frunk, which you can't see right now, but a pass-through through the frunk. It's got a mid-gate, so you can open the bait. It's got seating for six. Well, well three rows of seating. When it got three rows of seating, yeah. give them a walk around. The question is, you know, how much of this will actually make production and how much won't make production? Uh, obviously, those mirrors aren't going to make production. That's always, you know, something that designers love. I'm not sure if those giant wheels will make production. Are those 23s? Roman, 23s, you just walked right? through somebody else's camera oh, shot. Shoot. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I apologize. Kristen, Kristen is going to be very mad. She, she. Oh, we were going to go up here. That's okay. That's okay. I apologize. I'm just making fun of Roman for walking in front of you. So. Yeah. Um, no, but. Sorry. What were you saying? Sorry. How do, you, how do the Canadians say sorry? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> By the way, Chicago Water Show, dude, is very cool because they have up to seven different test drive opportunities where you can ride along or drive a lot of vehicles, new vehicles at the show. So as you know, Andre, I grew up in Chicago. And for me, the Chicago Auto Show, look at that. Cool, look at that. Was oh, that's a power wagon. It was always like a chance in the middle of winter, February, right, where nothing's happening. There's nothing happening on the lakefront. There's no concerts. Uh, to actually come out and have this really cool experience. And now that they've got not just these guys, but you know, all the other manufacturers are doing these drive things, it's even a better. And I felt like a commercial for the Chicago Auto Show, but I just, you know. But it was, it's it was, your hometown. Yeah, it's, it's your hometown. I used to come here with my dad. I've got great memories of this. And, you know, this is like a, one of those things that I'm worried about because auto shows, as you guys probably know, are slowly dying, right? It became very expensive for manufacturers to unveil new vehicles at auto shows. Well, they're dying for us, for journalists. Yeah, they're but also I, dying for but I, but I think if you're a consumer, I would be exciting, you know, excited to see some of this Yeah, stuff. but if there's not a lot of new cars here... Look, he just moved the wall. That's, that's something else. Okay. Wow. 
That is something there, else. There you but you, you see what I'm saying? If there's, I mean, the reason even as a consumer I came here is because there's a lot of new cars here. So, so because that's what drew you here. Right, yeah, exactly. But if there's not a lot of new cars, you're kind of missing some of it. All right. So, so Andre, we have to run this. Why don't we go that way the, so we don't get in yeah, front of everybody? If yeah. we walk in front of Kristen again, she's going to be very upset and mad. But you know, Ram is dropping something else here at the show. What is that? Um, they're going to be announcing their production Ram Revolution electrified trucks name because they're, uh, they're, uh, they're putting it in, this is a concept, but they're putting uh, their electric truck into production next year. They're announcing a name of that truck. And also they're going to have a Super Bowl commercial as well. So they're announcing all that stuff. Now you're going to be interviewing Mike Kovo, right? A yes. little bit later today, who yeah. is the CEO of Ram. Uh, and uh, one of the things I think that he's already been quoted as saying to some other publications is that they are doing a range extended version of this or a range extended version of yeah. an electric truck which would be cool because it doesn't exist right now yeah because you know if you need to go that extra mile oh, look at, look there's how, a jeep climbing look how steep that is i i think they're practicing i hope they're practicing i hope they're that practicing about the we're about to get to get some more interesting video than I thought here. Hold on. Wow. Hold on. You need a little bit of momentum. Use, was, the, use the Nathan method. I was worried he's going to ram it, in, ram it into the side of the... Uh, that is very steep, Andre. I don't know if you can tell on camera how steep that is. It's super steep. It's like 45 degrees. See, he used the Nathan method and everything is fine. Yeah. I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it feels like to go backwards like that when you don't have a lot of control. <laughs> Especially in the GMC Hummer when you're sliding down. Yeah, yeah, it's like a shelf road. They're no fun. All right, here we have uh, some of the the last call things, right? Black Ghost. The Black Ghost. There you yeah. go. Once again. Yeah, this here, is this, this is. is the last call. But this uh, is not a this is a truck show, Roman. So should we, should we ignore this? this? I think truck this, guys like Hellcats. Look at the wide body. Um, 800, 807 horsepower. horsepower. So why don't they take that engine and put it in that truck? Yeah, the TRX. <laughs> Ram, Ram. It's right here. The engine is right here. It's right. It, it doesn't seem like it would be hard just to go. <laughs> you know, 100 extra horsepower. It wouldn't hurt. No. I mean, it's not. It's not like that thing's getting magnificent fuel economy anyway, right? What's the difference between going from like 13 to 12? 12. Yeah. All right, let's keep it's going. Okay. All right. All right. Let's let's go. Let's go this way. So on that side of the show, there's also some like aftermarket companies, right? Yep. But we, we're interested in like the state of the industry. So let's let's walk this way, and actually, you know, look at the OEMs and many manufa big manufacturers. I, I don't want to. I'm going to apologize to this guy because oh. I walked in front of his camera. Hey, uh, sorry if I walked in front of your camera. I, oh, I didn't right. mean that. Sorry about that. It's all right. You're good, man. All right. All right. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. So you know, I always say to people when they come to an auto show. Don't look, just look at the cars, but look at where they place the cars. So you can always tell what car is important to a brand by where it's located in the show. So for Nissan, obviously, Z, Z, Aria. It's in the front of their yes, booth. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So this, this is the cars that the brand feels are some of the most important to their uh, success. What do you think of the new Z? I love it. I'm a it's, Z guy. I've yeah. owned four of them now. Uh, my dad started out as Z's. I would love to buy one of these. Uh, once again, unobtainium in some ways, right? Yeah, the dealers are marked very few up. of them, um, and they're marked up. up. Yeah, so that uh, the Type R uh, and the GR Corolla, all three of those are hard to get. All right, let's go buy Toyota. Let's see what Toyota's got. Yeah, I think they have a new Tundra that you saw for the first time, right? The Trail it's, it's Hunter. SEMA, yeah, yeah. Which and is, look, look at the size of this show. I mean, the, the Toyota booth is like a football field or more. It's it's gin ginormous. And of course, they've got a drive area too. Yeah. So you can, you can pretend to drive in a forest here. Look, they've got a very wooded little... Uh, there's a tent over there? Bucolic scene. <laughs> you can drive the Tundra or That's the Sienna cool. or the Rav4 You can have a picnic. Through. You can have a picnic over here. Uh, so let's see what Toyota's got over here. Well, so, of course, the Sequoia is important to them, right? So they put it on the front. Right here, two of the, two of the front trucks are Sequoias. And they're all hybrids, and they're using their, of course, twin turbocharged V6 that's and a, electrified. And of course, that's a capstone. That oh, blue yes. is gorgeous. Look at that dark blue. Now that that is like no, this is matter. this is that. Yeah, will that show up on camera? Yeah, this is this is a gorgeous color. Yeah, yeah, I love that color. 
Uh, it's going to show dirt like crazy. But this, but is, when it's clean, this is like 75000 I mean, this is almost $80,000 80, for one of these. So, so let's talk about that. That's actually a good thing you bring up. So, you know, when trucks started out, they were these basic work vehicles, right? And over the last, what, 10 years, 15 years, we've seen a steady climb. Keep walking. We've seen a steady climb up the financial here, ladder, yeah. right? The average car now uh, starts, costs $49,000. I don't know what the average truck costs, but I can tell you that it's more. It, it's more, and that nowadays you don't just have one top dog truck; you've got two or maybe three, right? When you think about Toyota, that's a good example. So you've got the TRD, you've got the uh, Premium, right? The well, they have the Platinum, Platinum, sorry, Platinum, platinum and now there's a Capstone. Yeah. So three top dog trucks so this the capstone is the new trim right yes. came out last year trim levels and it, it seems like they they saw the need right because ford let's, let's head over to the truck yeah ford and gmc were playing in that space right with the denali gmc's right and of course the limited fords and toyota saw that the market was moving upwards right in price and that's why the capstone actually uh, arrived and it's here i see a pretty cool looking fj andre Oh, yes. So they have a lineup of SEMA trucks here. So several of these trucks appeared at SEMA as well. That's where they were announced. Oh, dude, this, this FJ is incredible. FJ 49, according to what it says. Uh, but yeah, it's a little, maybe it's a little too auto showy. The, the paint is a little too much. Well, you see it's patina, but it's it's not real patina. It's like clear coated and like super well done. Yeah, I would say it's patinaed, patinaed. As, a, as opposed to patina. And then, then you start to wonder if it's like somebody did it or if that's the way it ended up. Like that looks real to me, the inside of the bed. Yeah, the, the, the inside of the bed looks really, really, uh, yeah. The rest rusty. doesn't look. What's this guy? So these are some of the Australian versions of the Toyota trucks. Um, and why is Toyota doing it? Why are they teasing us with these incredible, you know, giant, classic looking, but yet brand new diesel powered trucks? Could it why? be that there's a message, Andre? Could it be that the Land Cruiser may be coming back? Whoa. See, did I get you there? Yeah, <laughs> you stumped me. Maybe, well, maybe, there, Toyota's, maybe Toyota's sowing the ground for the return of the Land Cruiser, and that's why they're bringing these Aussie Utes, right? I'm hoping I'm saying that right for all you Aussies uh, watching, Aussie Utes, this, yes. watching this, to the uh, Chicago Auto Show, because these are obviously uh, not left-hand drive, they're right-hand drive. Right, and, and this is a six by six, uh, but, but, but it's, the Andrew, rumor- It's the mega six by six. But the rumor is, dude, that the Land Cruiser Prado is gonna enter the US market, right? But I haven't seen any prototypes of those vehicles in the U.S., so I'm still curious what's going to happen. Well, let's look at let's look at one truck that is here that will be viable. It's right here. It's the new uh, uh, Trail Hunter, Andre, which is actually a trim level now that's going to be above the TRD Pro, right? Or or, or kind of like a, to it. like a brother yeah. to the TRD Pro. I, I was talking to Toyota guys about this, and they were telling me that. Think of this as kind of the slower off-roader, you know, rock crawly off-roader versus TRD Pro, which is kind of a Baja Desert Runner. Uh, but but look at the suspension on this on this guy. And this is still a concept. This is still a prototype. Uh, but they actually have trail. Let me get some light on this. Hold on a second. They actually have Trail Hunter badging on all the suspension components, and they're giving it a lift. And there were, they did not announce any specs, like uh, payload or towing specs on this, but they're saying that the payload is going to be increased because you're adding a lot of weight to it, you know, with the rack system and a tent and like these really beefy uh, rock sliders as well. So you know how I was saying you can kind of guess what a manufacturer thinks is important by what they put in the front yes. of their booth? The other way works as well. What vehicle have we not seen here a lot of? It's a truck. There's only one other one truck. Tacoma? Exactly. The other, there's no, if you look, there's no Tacomas parked at the front. There, there was one hidden in the back. I know. I saw. And what do you think that means? Well, the new one is coming. Exactly. I think the reason that we don't see a lot of Tacomas here is that they know that the new Tacoma is coming. The next generation. Yeah, exactly. So why would you show it off when there's a new version of it coming? But dude, traditionally, Toyota has announced many trucks here. But they're not. But they're year. not doing it this year, which is, which is curious. Yeah, let's keep heading over. Should we uh, cr cross here? Yeah, yeah. We got to cross over. Uh, uh, they're back to 
Remember for a while there, they didn't have two halls, right? Because yeah. of COVID. They're back to two halls now. Uh, so over here we've got, like you saw, Ford, Ram, Nissan, uh, Jeep, Jeep. And then over here we've got Volkswagen, and of course Chevy, Honda, uh, and GMC. So where do you want to start? I want to start at Chevy. Okay. Because Chevy's on the left. Uh, Honda is here, uh, but they're not showing really, you know, anything new, and they have the ridge line, of course. I see, and an, aer I see an airplane. Okay, let's end there. Can we end in the airplane? <laughs> the Honda Jets. You yes. Andre, you, you are just pushing for all kinds of new TFL channels. TFL Jets. So uh, one of the guys here, this is, this is the, by the way, the Journalist Media Center right here. And, you know, when we did this walk around in SEMA, we suggested that we do TFL Boat. Yeah. And one of the guys said, no, call it TFL Floats. <laughs> Maybe not a TF bad idea, huh? TFL floats. Yeah, oh. let's do it. So, can you even get in here? Yeah, you can get in here. Here we go. We have to have our special wristband passes. So you broke a little bit of news recently, uh, and that was uh, you, you screenshot a Super Bowl commercial. Yes. Which featured what? Uh, the new Chevy Silverado EV Trail Boss. Uh, this is the off-road version of their electric truck. Um, so we we have our we have our wristbands. So it, let's see if it's here. I mean, I see, I see the Silverado. Yeah, let's the, check it out. Yeah, but I don't think uh, the Trail Boss is going to be here. N unfortunately, no. Maybe it will, so. Will Ferrell is in that commercial. Yeah. So I guess Will Ferrell is driving it around somewhere. But look, you get to drive an Ionic Five. Yep. I think I spent enough time with Nathan driving it from uh, Disney <laughs> to Disney. <laughs> you don't want to drive it again. <laughs> I want to work up my way up to the Six now. That's coming. Yeah. Ionic Six. <laughs> yeah. I've done I've done my time. Not there's anything wrong with it, but you know. Three guys in an attic crossing the country. But you see that blazer, this red car right there in, uh -huh. the, in, in the front? By the way, in the front of the Chevrolet booth. Yeah. Uh, that color is what approximately the Trail Boss was. That's a it beautiful color. It was that color. vibrant red color. I love the lighting display on this too. So of course we've seen uh, the uh, Silverado EV quite a bit, but it's getting closer to production, right? When, when is this supposed to actually hit the dealership floor? So dude, they're starting with a work truck. Unfortunately, the work truck they're starting with is uh, kind of a more optioned one, more expensive. Let's look at it in the profile. And it goes on sale in the spring. So right now, almost, almost in like March, April time frame, the work truck version of this is going on sale. But dude, they're gonna start at 74,000. Wow. 74,000. For a work truck. For a work that truck. That makes the... Uh Lightning Pro scene chief. Yes, again, once again. Can this, can this, can, is this sustainable, Andre? Do people no. really have that much credit to be spending that much money on work trucks? I don't think so. This is, of course, showing off their mid-gate. Um, I mean, they had it on the older Avalanche truck, of course, and now Ram is doing something similar with the new Ram electric truck, so. You, you can also see the power supply. So Ford, of course, is the first with onboard power, but if you look to the right there, yeah. you, you can see that uh, Chevy's now adding And now onboard. Ram is doing the same thing. Doing, adding onboard power, yeah. and it makes perfect sense. So is $74,000 crazy for a work truck? Yes, but I think if there's some other incentives, right? If you're saving fuel, or maybe there's some tax advantages for that, maybe it could work for some, some businesses. So the tax, um, 7500 tax credit, cuts off at 80,000, so they're still well below that <laughs> for a truck. But not far. Not far, yeah. Not far. All right, so I gotta t can I tell you a story about the Corvette? Uh, I was talking to uh, Jack from Savage Geese, you know, he, he got yeah. a Z06. This is like the, the new hot- Oh, this is so cor hot. Corvette, right? And so I was let's, really- Let's move forward. I was really starting to Jones for a Corvette, because let's face it, finally this is, you know, a world-class sports car, right? It doesn't get- much Basically better a supercar. Yeah, at the cost that these things are, right? Yeah. 150000 ish for the Z06. That's a lot of money. But, you know, I thought maybe we could just get a base Corvette, right? The, the 1LT. Because those are 67. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is really a, a supercar bargain, But you can't right? find them, right? Well, you could probably find them, sort of, kind of. But the problem that I ran into is I was just visiting my mom in Florida. And, like, dude, every other car was a Corvette. And it was driven by, like... And no disrespect meant for all our older fans, viewers, but they're driven by a lot of old, and I'm getting old too, but like older than me, right? So when you see guys like this driving them, it takes kind of the, the coolness factor. Not, and then finally I was driving to Miami. So my mom's on Marco Island. I was driving to Miami. Yeah. And like I said, we saw a Corvette come back down 
Alligator Alley, and Tommy and I both looked at each other, and there was like a 30-year-old guy driving it. Oh. So, any part of you want one of these? Yeah, uh, maybe exactly this car. It's a Z06. Ho hold on. Finish that thought in a second. Yes. Because we have to take another quick break. All right, so you want this, Andre? Maybe exactly this car. Look at this. This is a truck show, but how can you bypass a carbon wheel and carbon accents and, and removable top on this one and the color and the engine that revs to the stratosphere and the engine is behind us and and uh, maybe this car can, can you buy this for me <laughs> well, no. well we recently did a podcast where you announced what what you're buying you want to announce it again it's not a corvette it's a chevy colorado and where is it yeah where is it let's go look let's go okay look let's, let's, let's go. go look for it uh, yeah, he, Andre is uh, his next truck. And is it in production yet, Andre? Have you talked to the dealership yet? I've called my dealer probably a hundred times. Yeah. And I think my truck is being built as we speak. But it's not delivered yet, of course. So please, I, I really want it. Oh, this is almost my truck. Is it? It's a Trail Boss. Uh -huh. I ordered the Trail Boss. Yeah. Except mine is a nitro yellow. Wow. Yours is going to be like that Corvette. Oh, can I sit in this? Of course. This is, this this is, is like you, mine. This is what you do at the auto show. Are you getting excited? Uh, let, me, let me jump into my brand new truck. Except yours won't be black, I hope. No, mine is yellow, yeah. Mine but is my yellow. My biggest fear, Andre, and this is what a lot of the viewers and listeners had said, was it, it's a small truck for a big guy. Andre is 6'3", and he, he has a tall family. Okay, you, are you comfortable? Yeah. All right. Can you uh, sit behind me? Yeah. How tall is your daughter? Five eleven. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be your daughter, and I'm gonna sit behind you. I'm, I'm gonna see how how I do. So I'm a few inches taller than her. You know, it's not bad, Andre. Can you fit? Yeah. Yeah, I I, I can fit. I mean, I've got enough headroom. I've got enough leg room. Uh, what about your back uh, angle? It's not bad. It's not like straight up. Okay. So it's surprisingly good. I, so do you think my daughter would be grumpy uh, going to the lake like this? No, I think she'd be grumpy going to your relatives in Arizona, <laughs> but <laughs> not just going to the local. And, and it'll tow your boat, right? It tows enough. It tows over 7,000 pounds. Yeah. So my boat trailer is about 5,900 pounds. So, so uh, it's really cool. All right. Sh should we go over to GMC? Yeah, GMC uh, this way. All right. Anything new in the uh, Silverado world? Well, of course, the ZR2. Not, not for this show. Um, the 2023 Silverados are out, fresh face. The Duramax engine is updated, right? So it's the new LZ0 engine. And we, I still have to do an eye gauntlet on that. So I've been talking to Chevrolet to you know lend us a truck and it's coming in March. So we're gonna have a new 2.7 liter turbocharged Silverado and then we're also gonna have a diesel one, so. You know, the, over here they have all their supercars. Yeah. I don't think that Z06 would have any problem keeping up with any of these cars. Right, at a third of the cost, right? Yeah, or half the cost, depending on what, what car yeah. you're looking at. Now over there, uh, Volkswagen's got two cars covered, and we're gonna go cover that later today. That's should we unveil them <laughs> before <laughs> time? That would get us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we could take a peek under the... Under the sheet. Anyway, that's the new Atlas and Atlas uh, Cross Sport. Sport, yeah, and that, yeah. they're going to unveil them later today, so we'll have that, of course, for you as well when it's done. There's a boat, Roman. Yes. Hey, hey. Dude, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. Um, there's a boat. Okay, <laughs> there's Andre, a boat. All about boats. All right, so let's take a look at GMC. Let's see what we got here. Oh, dude, this is cool. So this is a 2024 Denali Ultimate. Let's just take a quick look at this. Um, so That's for 2024 model year, these oh, trucks black or blue black. Same. See, this is like purple. Yeah, I mean, this is there's trends obviously in the automotive world, and you can see that that dark blue is one of them. Yeah. So that's blurplish. So you know how Toyota did the cap capstone? Well, GMC is doing Denali Ultimate. Their Ultimate edition of the truck has you know even to the next level, you know different leathers and very. This is like the uh, baseball glove you know, um, interior. And look at this button, Roman. Do you see this little tiny button? Do you Massage know what that is? seat? Yes. Of course. Massage. Of course, you have to have a heavy duty truck with massage. How much? You don't want to know. I'm going to say it's approaching 100K. Actually, 
it was another story we we're almost first on. Yeah. Um, they announced pricing on this. And if this was a dually diesel, it starts at almost $100,000 for Denali Ultimate. But you're getting, you know, 34,000 pounds of towing and you're getting, a, you know, a ton of capability. So what other ones are here that, that we should highlight and uh, point out? Well, it's off-road. Uh, oh, what, what, why is that Hummer black? Yeah, so the first versions of the Hummer EV, of course, were all white. And now they're starting to come up with different colors, I believe. So that, you know... I've never seen it in a different color. Yeah. In, like in, in, in real life. Well, I've seen wrapped ones. People have bought them and, of course, wrapped them. But well, yeah, but I didn't, like, come get close to one. And Yeah, I like the white one better, I think. This makes it look a little smaller, a little bit less imposing. But you people know, love triple black, Andre. Yeah, but I would do another color. You know, maybe a bluish, a red one. So, you know, some something else as well. All right. So I want to talk about off-roading. All right, let's talk about GMC off-roading. Be because this is the 84 line. They're also going to have an 84X heavy duty coming out very soon. We've seen some prototypes of this truck. This is once again a 2024 model. Um, it's a brand new 84 off-road edition. And it's towing... Oh, dude. I saw this at the Denver Auto Show, uh, boat no, show. A Nautique? You're, you're, you're a skier, water skier. Super the Air, Air Nautique. Nautique, and this is the G25. Um, so you know how we talked about cost? Yeah. You know, this truck could be 80,000. This boat's 150. No. More? 200. 250. You're joking. 300. 400,000. Ooh, that so, is the ultimate. So when you road. have something this valuable, yeah. And this is the king of ski boats. Yeah. This is like the Rolls Royce. Um, you need a capable, expensive truck to tow it. But your toy, look at that roof. Uh, it, it's pretty, it's pretty, that tower is really crazy. Um, but when you have a boat this valuable, you need a valuable truck to tow it. All right, guys. So what we have to do now is you guys got to go over to TFL bids and we got to build it up like Doug did, right? For cars yes, and bids. Yes, yes. And then when you sell it for 37 million. We can get one of these. <laughs> one of these instead of a Porsche. How about that? Let's do it. <laughs> Would you do that? Of course. Yeah, hell yeah. Look at this boat. <laughs> All right, let's keep, let's look at the truck instead the of the boat. TFL floats? Is TFL this? floats, yeah. <laughs> you know, now the problem is we've said it. So Somebody's gonna go and grab the domain. Or, or, yeah, it's already it's already taken. <laughs> it's already taken. <laughs> we're not doing it, guys. So we're not buying it. Don't don't. We're not doing boats. I'm sorry. We have. We're in Colorado. Many, we're in Colorado. We're landlocked. Red tow hook. That's key. It's very important to an off-road uh, addition of a Show truck. Show me the inside. Let's see the inside. Yeah, let's take a look. I think you know they they were smart to do the AT4, and now they're gonna improve on that with an AT4X. And, um, the next generation. And I, I think the big news here, Andre, is they moved the DEF canister so it's no longer hanging down, right? It yeah. Used, it used to hang down. On the passenger side. And now you could fill it up right here. No, no, no. The actual canister used, yeah, yeah. To, yeah, used to hang. It used to hang down underneath the passenger side. Exactly. And now they have two, two ports, diesel and DEF. Of course, they're taped for the show because they don't want people... Peeing in them? <laughs> please, please don't. You can't find the bathroom. <laughs> please, please don't pee in the side of your GMC. Um, so you gotta be tall like Andre. I mean, I mean, let, let's, let's, you know. Um, wow. <laughs> you gotta please, really be. You gotta be tall. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a big truck and it's a bigger boat. <laughs> All right, we got about five minutes. Let's finish off at Honda, Andre. Should we look at the jet? Yeah, let's go look at the Honda jet. You know, I got to find the Honda jet. How well, was that experience? It was cool. You know what it is? People think that the Honda jet is a private jet. I'm not joking. This is absolutely true. It's like the odyssey of the sky <laughs> it's, it's the minivan of the private jet world i think the range is pretty short compared to like real i shouldn't say real but bigger Big, bigger jets bigger private jets so it's like being in an odyssey it's it's like that which is in a way kind of cool right does it have a sliding door like a big van door uh no it has an okay. airplane okay. door and there's like a little tiny space in the bathroom back where i suppose you could have a bathroom but it might be one of those composting bathrooms <laughs> i don't think like a full one fits back there uh, so we've got Honda here and Lexus, of course. Lexus. I just got to uh, uh, spend a lot of time behind the wheel of the LC500 in Florida when I was visiting my mom. Well, what how was that? Oh, what a beautiful car. If you guys uh, you know, want a car that's going to become highly collectible, this is the classic vehicle for that. I get that color combination, uh, the brown with the red. It doesn't get much better. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. And they don't sell a lot of them. So, you know, 
It's been out, what, three be, years, four years now? Do you think they'll be collectible at some point? Yeah, so I think the first year the convertible came out, I'm going to say it's 2000, correct me if I'm wrong. They sold the most and now it's kind of dropped off. Classic recipe for a highly collectible car. Beautiful car uh, that doesn't sell a lot. Topless. That ha topless that has a big old 5 liter V8, right? Nobody yeah. thinks of Lexus as a V8. Um, I know the Ridgeline is here, but I want to look at the Jet. All right, then we'll end up at the Ridgeline. Look at this, it's, it's in black. Um, yeah. And, it's, and it's, it's central to their booth. It needs wings, Andre. It's very uh, without wings. I'm not going to say it. But. Can we poke in our camera inside? I, I want to see inside. Yeah, you can walk up to it. You can go. go ahead and poke in. You just can't step in. Okay. okay. Yeah. I've actually flown in it. Have you? Yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool. Oh, this is the Honda the Jet cockpit. Elite 2. So this is the, uh, the latest Hold version. On. Let me let get you a mic. I'm uh, Roman. Hey, Roman. Tim Peters. Nice to meet you, Tim. Nice How to meet you. you. Yeah. So this is the latest version of the Honda Jet? Latest version of the Honda Jet. This is uh, just been uh, introduced at uh, NVAA this past October, and we started deliveries this past month. So I was, I was telling our viewers out there that it's kind of the odyssey of the sky. <laughs> Um, is that is that unfair? It, it's it's actually uh, in its class. It is uh, tops in uh, ceilings at forty three thousand. Okay. Uh, speed at four hundred and twenty two knots. Uh, has room for up to eight. Okay. It'll go fourteen hundred or fifteen hundred and forty seven nautical miles with four on board. Uh, composite fuselage, uh, aluminum wings and empennage. The aircraft is the most fuel efficient in its class. And it's a VLJ designation, so very light jet. So, how much? So, this aircraft uh, is going to start at about 6.9, and with options, you're going to be somewhere around 7.3 million. Which would be a lot cheaper than a G5. <laughs> <laughs> or a G6, or a 7, or any of those. I'll let Gulfstream answer that, but yeah. Okay. Well, this, is, this is in a, a little different segment, but, but certainly very popular. We've delivered 226 aircraft so far. Wow. Certified in 2015 and uh, been very, very popular uh, around the U.S., Canada. I, I, I got so, to ask, any thought of electrification? Um, no, <laughs> not, not, at the, uh, not at the moment. They actually, it's powered by GE Honda engines that are built in Burlington, North Carolina. The aircraft's b built in uh, Greensboro. Uh, with our engines, they, again, most fuel efficient and uh, from a durability, reliability standpoint, uh, 99.7% reliability, so just a very solid product. So we're from Denver. Okay. Um, so we can take this from here to Denver. It's about 1,100 miles. Is that doable? With, with four on board, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Roman, um, let's jump in. So, so I'll, I'll make a viewer. If, if TFL Bids ever takes off and like you know, Doug just sold his for $37 million, <laughs> instead of buying a Porsche or a Bugatti, let's get this. I think that would be a... But the problem isn't the cost, right? It's the operating costs. That's good. Actually, operating no. costs are about $1,100 an hour to operate. So that includes your engine programs and your fuselage programs. I, I take that's it that's a, cheap for a private jet. Uh, it is. It's actually yeah. very, very affordable. All right. So there you go. So to fly and to then, Chicago. And then my, my cousin-in-law is a pilot. Okay. So he can, he can fly this. So to fly to Chicago, it's going to cost you 6.9 starting. And then 3000 give or take. Right? It's to operate. hours, yeah, to get okay. there. So give or take. <laughs> for flying 400 miles an hour, <laughs> cover a thousand miles, <laughs> three hours. Yeah, it's, but can, it's about a three-hour aircraft. That's correct. Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah. All well, right, nice. All right, thank, thank you, you, you very guys. much. Really right. appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, well, I, there you have it, guys. I think we figured out the the, the, the kind of the coolest toy here. Yeah. Uh, uh, Certainly, you know, our budget extends much more to that side-by-side -side talent <laughs> than it does to the Honda Jet. <laughs> but let's finish up on the ridge line and call it done. Well, yeah, I think uh, Alex behind the camera would appreciate this, right? Because we have CRFs uh, in the back of this, right, Alex? I own one of these. <laughs> Alex owns one. In teal and white. <laughs> nice. And if you get a Honda, uh, it, it outfits you know, both bikes. Uh -huh. I, I think those are the only two bikes that actually... <laughs> yeah, I think the tailgate would be down for any other bike. But they look good in there. Well, that's the beauty of Honda, right? They make you know, different classes and different types of vehicles. And you, I bet you get those bikes on the jet. So you can take your Ridgeline, put your motorcycles on them, and then take them to your jet and then fly to the uh, next motocross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. Remember, uh, head on over to alltfl.com for our complete coverage of the uh, Chicago Auto Show. And, Andrew, we got a lot more videos to do. So uh, let's hit it and uh, see you guys next time. Ciao.